Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. This is part two for this news report today. It's Tuesday, March 12th, 2013. I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com, although I'm having problems with my videos up there. I'm sorry about that. I don't really know what to do to fix it. I know that uh, there's, I've been having a lot of issues with uh, just getting onto sites um, and then basically the pages being unavailable, especially with alternative um, sites or truth or news. Um, Alan Watt, he's been having a lot of problems. So uh, these are what you call subversive attacks, and uh, there's not much you can really do about it. Um, you just kind of have to take it. So Saudi Arabian base spies aided CIA drone hits in Yemen. So it says here that Saudi Arabian officials have given the U.S. spy agency uh, CIA uh, permission to build an assassination drone base there on the condition that the kingdom's role remains concealed. So uh, we just heard about uh, drone bases in Niger right now. So they have uh, drone bases in Niger. The Sunday report adds that while the government of the neighboring uh, Djibouti, uh, where the U.S. military has also built a major assassination drone base, put tight restrictions on any lethal operations carried out from its soil. It further reveals that the CIA recruited Saudi spies and operatives to track down U.S.-born Yemeni cleric Anwar al-Lakwi in Yemen to facilitate his assassination by American terror drones. Libyan government aiding and abetting Ansar al-Sharia. So it goes on and says that the new Libyan government, which exists thanks to NATO intervention in 2011, is providing aid and comfort to al-Qaeda-linked groups. So foreign policy reports that al Ansar al-Sharia returns to Benghazi. So it reminds us that Ansar al-Sharia is a radical al-Qaeda-linked group linked to the attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi back in September which led to the death of four Americans that advocates the implementation of strict Sharia law across Libya. Aided by the West and NATO's war of regime change, Ansar al-Sharia fought with other Libyans to topple the Gaddafi regime in 2011. So you remember this article just came out from the 10th, Karzai says U.S. colludes with the Taliban. So it says here that Karzai accused the U.S. and Taliban insurgents of having a secret understanding to foment violence as a pretext to keep foreign troops in Afghanistan. Then comes this. Over 20 tons of heroin seized in Afghanistan. Is this Karzai's way of negotiating better terms? Almost 21 tons of heroin have been seized in an operation in eastern Afghanistan, the head of Russia's Federal Drug Control Service said on Tuesday. So it says here the FSKN officers had taken part in a unique operation. 21 tons is, in essence, the annual volume of drugs brought into Russia. Angry over detentions, Afghan villagers threaten uprising if U.S. Special Forces do not leave. So, but it goes on here and it says that, it says that uh, this deadline expired for them to leave the area where residents have grown increasingly hostile towards the Americans. Despite Karzai's orders, the American Special Forces remain in the province where dozens of villagers accuse them and their Afghan partners of intimidation through unprovoked beatings, mass arrests, and forced detentions. The recent shootout, uh, which also killed two Afghan policemen, only deepens distrust. Distrust, yeah. Then we have this, U.S. troops attack truck killed two Afghan civilians. A major blast soldiers for shooting without warning. So tensions between the Afghan government and U.S. occupation forces are already high and look to take another turn for the worse today after U.S. troops attacked a random truck on the highway between Kabul and Bagram, killing two civilians and wounding another. Details surrounding the attack remain scarce, with U.S. officials only saying that the truck was too close to their military convoy. Such shootings are not unusual, but this one is old time with anger already rising over the torture and disappearances by U.S. troops nationwide. And I think this is another tit for tat. Um, five U.S. troops killed in helicopter crash, officials say. So five U.S. service members died Monday when a helicopter crashed in Kandahar province of southern Afghanistan. On Iraq uh, Navy's signed cooperation agreement. The navies of the Islamic Revolution Guard Corps in Iraq have signed an agreement to expand cooperation between the naval forces in the two countries. They describe the agreement as the beginning for more cooperation between the two countries. It says it will be arranging mutual visits for naval forces and holding joint drills. That's kind of a big deal. State Department reiterates sanctions threat against Pakistan over Iran pipeline, the gas pipeline seen as vital to Pakistan's economy. State Department spokesman Victoria Newland has reiterated U.S. threats to impose economic sanctions on Pakistan if it dares to follow through on the off-delayed plans to build a gas pipeline to neighboring Iran. If this project actually goes forward, 
uh, that the Iran Sanctions Act would be triggered, insisting that they have been straight up with the Pakistanis about the fact. EU imposes ban on Press TV CEO, news director. So the European Union has imposed several, or uh, actually, yeah, has imposed travel bans and financial restrictions on two senior directors of Press TV, the latest on its campaign against Iran's English language news channel. So pretty crazy. Uh, they've shut down satellites as well. UN moves peacekeepers to South Sudan ahead of offensive against militants. We have the hundreds of UN peacekeepers have been deployed to a volatile state in South Sudan before an expected government offensive against a militant group in the country. Backstory in July 2011, South Sudan voted to break away from Sudan following a two-decade civil war that killed about two million people in Africa's biggest country. But the new oil-rich nation, which is one of the least developed countries in the world, has had to confront ethnic tensions and rebellions of its own. More crisis uh, response headed to AFRICOM amid terrorist concerns. So this German, from Germany, a new Africa-focused marine crisis response unit could soon be in place as part of a broader effort to beef up AFRICOM, AFRICOM's ability to confront emerging terrorism threats on the continent. Incor has proposed a new special purpose marine air ground task force which would be specifically tailored for crisis response in Africa. Then we have UN accuses Malian soldiers of retaliatory attacks on ethnic groups. This isn't the first time we've heard this. It says the UN has accused Malian soldiers of launching retaliatory attacks which have apparently targeted specific ethnic groups in the West African country. So most of you probably remember this article I just covered, Ethnic Hungarians Rally for uh, Zekler Land Autonomy. They demonstrated in the central Romanian city, calling on the government of Romania to grant regional autonomy to the land. They also were protesting against the government's regionalization draft, which threatens our people's existence, they said. Then I saw this uh, from today. Hungary lawmakers rebuff EU and U.S. What the heck does that mean? says... Hungarian lawmakers uh, said on Tuesday, I'm sorry, on Monday, passed amendments to the country's constitution despite warnings from the European Union and the U.S. that the measures could threaten the rule of law and weaken democratic checks and balances like they have in their countries. Parliament controlled by the Prime Minister, a right-leaning alliance approves the change, approved the changes, I'm sorry, uh, including provisions that allow the court system's top administrator and prosecutors to choose which judges hear legal cases in a party-line vote. The moves and flaring political tensions with Brussels and Washington combined with investor worries about the autonomy of the country's central bank, where a close ally of this individual, Orban, uh, took the helm last week to help send the Hungarian currency to its weakest level since uh, early June. The EU, a club of Western liberal democracies, has struggled recently to keep some of the bloc's newer members on what it considers the proper legal path. German foreign minister uh, told reporters that he was concerned about the latest developments in Hungary, adding that uh, Hungary must understand that the EU is a community of values. Almost makes me want to puke. Living or leaving the UK makes Scotland wealthier, they say. So Scotland's public finances are stronger than the UK as a whole with a full geographic share of the North Sea revenues, official figures have shown. So their overall um, balance of payments was relatively better than the UK's as a whole by some £845 a person in that year. So the Scottish uh, finance secretary said, with responsibility for our own finances and our own vast natural resources, we will be able to make choices in our own best interests. With independence, we would control the fiscal levers we need to suit our own economic circumstances and maximize Scotland's potential to secure new investment and jobs. Uh, are you rich? You'll probably live longer, too. So it says, studies show link between life expectancy and income gap. So, because if you can afford the care, uh, you're going to live longer. I mean, that's that's what I said. That's, that's the nice scam. So... Uh, but, uh, you know, of course, if you can't really afford it, they're going to keep dangling that carrot in front of you, and then you're going to go into debt, and then you're going to actually go to work and, 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 you know, basically drag your ass to work to pay for the medical care so you can stay alive. Um, it's just, it, it's a vicious cycle. And then, and, and then working, 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 you get more injured, you get more hurt, and then you got to get more medical care. <laughs> got to get another job for that. Research shows a disturbing trend in the U.S. as life expectancy goes up, the life expectancy gap between the rich and poor is widening, so it's uh, not a disturbing trend for those that are rich, though, uh, because it means more for them and less for everybody else. 
While U.S. life expectancy hit 78.5 years in 2009, most gains went to those whose income is the highest. Stonehenge may have been burial site for Stone Age elite, says archaeologists. The date cremated bone fragments of men, women, and children found at the site puts origins uh, of first circle back 500 years to 3000 BC. So it goes on here, it says that they want to find the relationship between them. Uh, I guess they say clearly there was, these were special people in some way. A mace head, a high status object, uh, was found. He believes it held incense, suggests the dead could have been religious and political leaders in their immediate families. And just to throw it out there, um, because I am under the belief that um, that there were some kind of humans living alongside dinosaurs. I know that's not what you're taught, but uh, there were giants in those days. So you know, it says in this section, they take a look at some of the still available evidence that man, uh, that men of giant stature, even larger and more robust than Neanderthals, existed in the past. So a little Genesis quote. I never saw this before. Uh, there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came into uh, the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. So, I mean, just, I mean, they could have levers, like in Egypt and stuff like that, uh, technology to move these big, uh, heavy rocks. Uh, but I guess if you were 16 feet tall, you are a beast. You might be able to actually uh, get some guys and lift that thing. Be a better explanation, right? Uh, Marin environmentalist claims recreating extinct species is possible, so... It says here that scientists are developing the ability to reassemble an extinct animal's genome and even recreate the animal itself. So they call it de-extinction, so it should be good. They were talking about bringing back the woolly mammoth and then actually bringing back a Neanderthal, and they were looking for a surrogate mother, and then the professor said they're not there yet because they wouldn't tell anybody. They'd do that in secret. Uh, Georgia Guidestones, almost 33 years old. The Georgia Guidestones were erected March 22, 1980. That means in 2013 they'll be 33 years old, so... It says here, March 22nd is uh, 322. 322 is the address of Skull and Bones. And, of course, it was donated by what? Uh, I think it was the Freemasons. So um, it's a significant number, basically, 33 degrees. And um, and uh, basically, I just threw that out there because someone asked me what I thought about it. I'm like, I didn't think anything about it. But whatever it's worth. Scientists, we found Vikings mythical sunstone. You've probably seen this. They've been studying crystal found in shipwreck for three years. They think they found the Viking sunstone in mythical navigational aid. Viking mariners used to locate the sun and traverse the sea before compasses were developed. They were once considered mystical because they were able to pinpoint the sun's position even through the clouds. But a 2011 study found that the stones were actually real. Climate change is the biggest security threat in the Pacific region, says U.S. commander. So top U.S. military official says climate change is the biggest security threat in the Pacific region. It goes on and talks about uh, rising sea levels. It says if it goes bad, you could have hundreds of thousands or millions of people displaced, and then security will start to crumble pretty quickly. In other words, their, their established order would, would uh, crumble pretty quickly. It would be a little more free, so they don't want that. Arctic gets greener as climate warms, says NASA. So all these, uh, the Russians and Chinese and all that, they want to get through the passage, a faster passage and travel route and drill for oil um, like this. Higher temperatures and a longer growing season means some of the Earth's chilliest regions are looking increasingly green, says researchers. Say the Arctic's been warming at a faster rate than the rest of the world in the past several decades. Amplified greenhouse effect, that's due to the aerosol spraying, is largely to blame for the changes in plant life. Of course, they didn't say that, but that's what they're doing. They're creating a microwave or greenhouse effect uh, with those aerosols that they're doing. Uh, forget the melting Arctic sea ice in Antarctic is growing. Yeah, it's actually record, record levels. So the Arctic Ocean has plummeted to its lowest level, but down at the other end of the world, sea ice surrounding Antarctic has swelled. So, so it's the snow is just melting here in the Midwest, and then we got dumped by a chem rain. Uh, so right at the same time, so it flooded a lot. Uh, we got more snow again. Winter snowstorm hits Europe now, leaving hundreds stranded. So 68,000 homes without power in France and 800 others were trapped inside their cars. Over 30 million tons of nuclear waste in Fukushima alone, smoking mounds of disaster debris, possibly from spontaneous combustion. combustion. So that's pretty scary stuff. But hey, let's look at uh, global warming and climate change. Russia to build anti-meteorite shield. So this is, of course, part of the plan, right? Weaponizing space. Russia would build a system to protect the Earth from meters and other space debris, says the Russian authorities. 
So it's called the Citadel, cost about 500 million. And lastly, moon mining race is underway, so to exploit some resources. Thank you.